In this video, we're going to focus on the tooltips and I want you to look at the tooltip right now. You can see here, the tooltip here has been customized in such a way where we remove everything and what we're going to do is we're going to break down how the tooltip is structured. Put in here this text that if ever we put in here the text, the tooltip will automatically match whatever the text is and removes everything from the tooltip. So this is for anyone who wants to know how to customize the tooltip in depth and this one is a quite useful series or at least video to understand how to do this in this video we're going to focus on a viewer question which is how can we remove the labels in the tooltip and only maintain one label in the tooltip in chart.js so this is a great question because i covered this in another video of mine but i felt that this video was probably slightly outdated based on how i structure my video so this is a good one and let me show you first where this video came from so or at least where the question came from so this is one of my other videos regarding to uh, how to create a plugin in charges which is absolutely to be honest this is one of my uh, i guess one of the most exciting video i like because it's very uh, very different than the other videos and it goes deep in how to make a plugin which is a very fun skill to know in here ben nguyen asked the question well sadly enough his question has been gone i couldn't find it anymore i was able to find it in my email however i still want to uh, read the story what he shared it was the following thank you for your videos your series about charges is so informative and useful wonder why so many don't know uh, how to visit by the way and then here he gives a suggestion by the way i think if you make some of the editing on your videos as you put the result of the tutorial in the beginning it will be more attractive especially for the new viewers so first of all Ben, thank you very much for sharing this idea. And I do like the idea and I, I've been working on doing that. I'm doing it from now on. And secondly, I couldn't find your question here, but I know I had it in my email. So maybe you already found the sol solution to your question. However, I just want to make sure you have it. So I'm going to show you exactly how we're going to do it. We're going to break it down step by step. So first of all, let's create a chart here quickly. So I'm going to grab here in chart.js, yes, this is the latest version, 3.4.1. In here, I'm going to grab this default part here, paste this in here. And then what I will do is I'll go here to getting started. And here I'm going to grab this one here above the canvas ID. I'm going to remove this one here because I want my own version with a nested div, which is already made here. And then I copy this chart.js yes, library here. All right, so once I paste this here, we're done. Give it the proper indentation. Once we're done with the indentation, we're ready to go. So now what I'm going to do is the following. I want to give it a uh, class here to ensure that we have a fixed width. So we say width, oh sorry, no, we don't do that. We do here, chart box, that's the class name. This class name I'm going to copy and I'm going to put in here in the style, dot chart box with 700 pixels, all right? Save this, go back here, refresh, now we have a chart. All right, so what I'm going to do now first is to create the structure that I'm using now consistently. So I want to make sure that, that this is being used consistently because this is the way how ChartGS is going. Uh, well, that's their step going there towards always using this kind of structure. So if you understand the structure, it's the best to know, or at least it's best to, to read the documentation. So we have here the setup block, config block, and we have the render initialization block, init block. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first create the setup block and here I will say constant data equals, this is where we put in all our data. Put in your curly braces and then a semicolon. Copy everything between the data. So everything between the data, paste it in here. All right, once you're done with that, we're done with this. Next one is the config block. Config block, same methodology. Const config equals, and then we have our curly braces. And then in here, what we're going to do is we're going to grab the following here, type the data and the options, which is what I call the building blocks of chart.js. These are the skeleton or the bare bones. Cut this out, paste this in here. What we're going to do here, I'm going to give it a proper indentation because we're going to work with this later on as well. So uh, it's probably best if you already have them nicely organized. All right, so we've got this, but the only thing I want to adjust here, the data, and then comma, data comma. All right, so we have this now 
final, final part, render. This one is quite simple. Constant. And this constant will be my chart for the ID name of the canvas. And then we say here the following. Uh, first of all, we say new because we're going to make a constructor. And then we say chart. Parenthes of, uh, this is parentheses. Make sure you see the difference. This is curly braces, but this one is parentheses. Why constructor needs parentheses? In here, I'm going to put in the items. What I want is the following. I'm going to grab this document, get element by ID. That part, this part here can be skipped. Chart.js is intelligent enough to understand how to do that one. Comma, because it has it in the constructor building. So we have the comma here, and then we say config, because this is the, our variable or constant from here. So this links to this, and this links to whatever we have here. All right, so we've got this now. We're almost done here. Delete all of this. Save that. Refresh. Our chart is working. Same, except that we have our official structure, or correct structure now. So now what I want to do is the following. So we have here this. You see here the tooltip. The tooltip consists of basically two parts here. You see the red in bold letters. That will be, uh, that's basically what we call the tooltip header or the title. That's bold. That, that's one part of it. Below, we have what we call the body. But it's not the body, it's called the label. Yes, it's a label. And the label consists of the color and the label text. That's probably the best way to explain it. Or like the body consists of the color and the label text. The label text is the number of votes and the number 12. And the color is the square here. And basically what we want to do, and it was the question from Ben. And Ben wanted the following. He wanted to only grab this value, put it only in here. So the title should always have that, no matter what. All right. So we're going to clean up the tooltip. So to do this, we're going to work in here, in the options here, and that's this one here. So after the scales, we put in comma, and then we say here plugin, because in charge S3 we have to use plugins, and then we say here tooltip, and once we did this, what we're going to say here is the following. What I'm going to do is we're going to pinpoint it. But the first thing what I want to do is I want to push this carrot. You can see the carrot is the triangle here of that cloud, of the, or of the tooltip. I want to push it down. I want it at the down so that this tooltip always is pointed up. All right. So to do this, this is just for to make it a bit more pleasing. We say align, comma. So we want to push a, a Y align. Sorry, sorry. This is the Y align. This means vertical alignment. Vertical means from top to bottom. And then we want to push the carrot down. So we say carrot goes down to bottom. Save this. Refresh. And as you can see here now, we have this nice tooltip at the very top of the chart. All right, now we've got that. Time to do the real stuff. So what is the color here? So the color is the easiest one to remove because it has a special command. It's called the display colors. So we're going to use that one. And basically, it's also in here. Let's go to the configuration, tooltip. Let me say here, display colors. All right. If true, which is set by default true, it's a Boolean. If color is true, uh, color boxes are shown in the tooltip. All right. So this is the one that we already need. So we say grab this one and go to say this column false, save, refresh. There we are. Problem one solved. The next one we need to do is we need to work with uh the title and with the label the label is the lower part basically with the text which consists of the number and the number of votes so basically that the, the text of number of votes and the number 12 or whatever the number is so to do this i'll put in here another comma but i'm going to explain here what we need go to tooltip here and i need to go down here it's called callbacks callbacks are extremely powerful and useful but also very, very question for, um, no, not that known. Or many people who who see them, they don't really understand what they do because they don't do anything, but they have the ability to do anything, whatever you want to program. So that's why it's powerful, but by default, it is powerless. All right. So you can see here, see callback section. We click on that, we go down, you can see here now, we go to Options, Plugins, Tooltip, Callbacks. All right, so this is the namespace. This would mean here, we're going to make here another one, it's called Callbacks, but remember, it's with an S. Sometimes it's without S, and other times it is. If you don't know or you're not sure, 
check the documentation. Why? I don't know. Maybe because in tooltip, the callbacks is re related to individual tooltips. Basically, every array of the tooltip, as you can see here, like we have like six clouds. So probably that's why you have one, two, three, four, five, six clouds here or tooltips. That's why it is callbacks and sometimes not. So, and if it's maybe single item, then it uses differently. However, just check the documentation. So in here, we're going to pinpoint now our uh, title. This is the title. Returns text to render as a title of the tooltip. This is the one, and it says here tooltip item brackets object. All right. Don't get confused by this, but this is the argument, which is basically the one you want to pinpoint. So for example, here, argument would be tooltip one or tooltip zero, index zero, index one, two, three, four, five. All right. Don't worry, we're going to use a very simple command so you don't have to even think how to do that. So all we're going to say here, title. Here what we need to do in the title, we basically have to give a constant. So we're going to refer to somewhere else and that's somewhere else we're going to push it up uh, or we're going to put in here. So to make it easy, I will just say here, this will be the title tooltip, which makes sense, very simple. All right, that's our constant. So in here, I'm going to make a specific block which says tool tip. And in here we can say constant, and then this constant will be the title to tip equals. Alright, pay attention here. So we're going to give it an argument. The argument is the to tip value. I or two tip items. Remember, this is the loop. So we basically loop through the numbers one, two, three, four, five, or zero, array uh, index zero up to five. And then in a function, this is our nameless function, and we say here, return whatever we want. What do we want to return? Well, let's say here, um, test. Just straightforward. Save this. Refresh. All right, now, as you can see here, now our tooltip has been renamed to test. Beautiful. So, all right, I don't want this, but what I want is I want this label here. To make this simple, all we're going to do here is a constant, and then we say here, constant, I'll just say this label, uh, Tooltip. I'm just giving it a name tooltip. Label. You can give it anything you want. The reason I'm giving this is because there's a lot of terms in ChartJS with the term label that can give, that can create a extreme confusing, uh, well, it can create confusion. So I don't want to, oh, well, I don't know what happened. Yeah, sorry. Undo that. That can create confusion. So we say here this, and then we say equals that. It's a string. So we grab this one, put it in here. If I save this now, refresh, nothing changed. However, if I grab this or this constant here, we say instead of test equals this. Save this, refresh. Now we have this. All right, beautiful. Next part. Let's start to work on the label. And what we want to do is we just want to remove the label. But to remove the label, you cannot just say display none or something like that. No. What we need to do here is create a new tooltip and basically return or sorry, create a new callback specifically for the label. I basically return blank. That's what we're going to do. If I'm going to show you, going to click on tooltip, we're going to go and grab this one here, the label. Return text to render for an individual item in tooltip. So you can see here, I guess it shows you something, but that's all right, it's not important for now. What I want to do here is, I just want to focus on this. Let's say label here, and then we say label tooltip. And once that is, and then I'm going to just copy this exact same item here. You can see there's nothing fancy in here. Very straightforward. I'm just going to do your semicolon, sorry. And I do see many, uh, if you watch many other videos from some, some experts and some tutorials, you see that more and more people are starting to remove the semicolon because it doesn't matter. So I don't know what you prefer, which you prefer with or without. If you want it, just put it in the comment section below to tell me. However, I'll just try to do for now with just for the sake of consistency. All right, so we say label tooltip, which is this, label tooltip, copy that. This will be label return. Uh, here is the label tooltip. Oh, let me double check. Oh, this is not allowed. Sorry, we cannot use it. I'm going to give it another name because we have another label tooltip there that will be conflicting. So I'm going to give it label chart, which is just a chart label, which makes sense. And this should be our label tooltip because this is basically the label of the tooltip, which makes far more sense in naming. All right. So in here, remove this and blank. 
as you can see here so the constant label tooltip which I put it here label tooltip here so sorry about it don't get confused here label chart is this label chart and label chart and then here what I just re so just to reiterate or repeat myself this is label tooltip label equals label tooltip which is a constant and this label tooltip constant is this here loops through again to the tooltip items which is the array and then return zero save this go back here refresh now look at this all right we've removed this beautiful but maybe and i'm sure especially for me and probably for you as well you have a keen eye and you look at it and say wait a minute do you see all this extra panning space or what is that all that space between there that is hideous you're 100 percent right i would never accept that as well so what we're going to do is we're going to figure out how do we remove this luckily this is quite simple let's go back here to the tooltip we have to scroll up here back we have to look up back in the tooltip settings where we have the tooltip here so plugins tooltip namespace remember that and in here what we're going to look for is basically the title margin bottom and that's this one here the title margin bottom it says here margin to add on bottom of the title section all right by default set on zero of six what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. Remember where it needs to be placed. Check out the main namespace here. So you also immediately understand how to read the documentation. Plugins, tooltip. In here. So that means not in the callback. Now we're going to put a comma here, which we have already. We put in here the title margin bottom. And then we say equals zero. Comma. Save. Let's go back here. Refresh. And there we are. Now look at this beautiful we have removed the space between there and now we have just only this number of votes here which is this one here so i want to say here let's say here this would be the sales records i have no idea i'm just making up stuff sales records refresh you see here sales records look at our tooltip sales records beautiful and this is how you can create a tooltip and adjust it and understand how to use the callbacks i hope it was clear also how the breakdown of the tooltip is how the tooltip is structured so but if you have any questions we're going to do this more put them in the comment section below thank you for watching this video and i hope you enjoy it and if you enjoy this video you probably will enjoy this one as well and if you're interested in chart.js check out in the description box the link directing to my chart.js course where you can learn everything about chart.js and finally of course make sure you subscribe to my channel